the magic key. The box was by Chip's bed. Something was glowing inside it. Chip looked at the box. It's magic, he said. Chip ran into Biff's room. Biff, he called. Look at the box. Biff and Chip looked at the box. Something was glowing inside it. They opened the box. They looked inside. It's magic, they said. A key was in the box. The key was glowing. It's a magic key, said Biff. She picked up the key and the magic began. Biff and Chip got smaller and smaller and smaller. Oh, help! Said Biff. It's magic, said Chip. Biff and Chip looked at the room. Everything looked big. Look at my big slippers, said Biff. Everything looks big. Chip picked up a pencil. Look at this big pencil, he said. Biff picked up a pin. Look at this big pin, she said. They looked at the house. It looked like a big house. The windows were glowing. It's magic, said Chip. Biff and Chip ran to the house. They looked in the window. Biff went to the door. She pushed and pushed, but she couldn't get in. They went to the window. She pulled and pulled, but he couldn't get in. Something was coming. She picked up the pin. Oh, help! He said. It was a little mouse. Biff and Chip looked at the mouse. The mouse ran away. Something was glowing. It was the magic key. Biff picked it up. Biff and Chip got bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh no! Said Biff. Oh help! Said Chip. It's the magic, they said. The magic was over. What an adventure! Said Biff and Chip. Pirate adventure. Biff was looking at a book. The book was about pirates. I don't like pirates, she said. Wilf and Wilma came to play. They went to Biff's room. They looked at the little house. It's a magic house, said Biff. Don't be silly, said Wilma. They looked at the key. It's a magic key, said Chip. Don't be silly, said Wolf. The key began to glow. The magic was working. Oh, help! said Wilma. The magic was working. The children got smaller and smaller and smaller. Oh no! said Wolf. Oh, help! said Wilma. We don't like this. They said. They looked at the house. The windows were glowing. Biff went to the door. She put the key in the lock. She opened the door. The children went inside the house. It's a magic house, they said. Look at the sand, said Biff. Look at the sea. Said Chip. Come on, they said. They ran to the sea. Wolf picked up a shell. Chip picked up a coconut. Biff climbed up a tree. Wilma went in the sea. This is magic, they said.
They played on the sand. They played in the sea. What an adventure! said Biff. A pirate came up. He looked at the children. Children! said the pirate. Pirates! said the children. Oh, help! they said. Come on! said the pirates. The pirates had a boat. They went to the pirate ship. I don't like pirates, said Biff. Look at that pirate, said Biff. Look at that big rope, said Chip. I'm frightened, said Wolf. We wanted a party, said the pirate. Nobody wanted to come. Will you come to the party? The children went to the party. It was a good party. I like pirates, said Biff. The key was glowing. It was time to go. Goodbye, said Chip. Thank you for the party. Oh no, said the pirates. What an adventure, said Wilma. I liked the pirates, said Biff. Wilf looked at the little hat. The Dragon Tree Keeper was looking at a book. The book was about a dragon. Keeper couldn't read the story. Biff didn't want to read it. She didn't like dragons. Keeper went into a chip's room. Chip read the story. I like dragons, said Chip. Something was glowing. It was the magic key. Oh no, said Chip. Chip picked up the box. He ran into Biff's room. The magic is working, he said. Biff picked up the key. They looked at the magic house. The door is open, said Biff. The magic was working. It took the children inside. It took Floppy too. It took them to a wood. Floppy didn't like the wood. He was frightened. Biff pulled Floppy. Come on, she said. Don't be silly. An owl flew out of a tree. Floppy didn't like the owl. He ran away. Floppy ran out of the wood. Come back, called Biff. Come back, called Chip. It was no good. Floppy ran and ran. Oh, help, said Biff. The children looked for Floppy. They called and called. Floppy, come back! They called. The children came to a tree. It was called the Dragon Tree. A dragon lived under the tree. The dragon had Floppy. He wanted Floppy for supper. Floppy was frightened. Oh no, said Biff. What a nasty dragon. I don't like dragons. Biff looked at the dragon's tail. She took off her belt. She put it round the tail. Chip helped her. Keeper went inside the tree. He pulled Floppy out. Chip helped him. The dragon was cooking. It did not see them. Come on, called Chip. They ran and ran. The key was glowing. The key is glowing, called Biff. It's time to go home. What an adventure, said Chip. I don't like dragons, said Biff. 
grand. A call came to the house. The children ran to see. It's grand," said keeper. "Come in," said mom. "Come in," said dad. The children helped. They took grand things. What a lot of things," said keeper. The children liked grand and grand like the children. Come and see my toys," said Keeper. "Come and see my room," said Biff. "Come and play," said Chip. Gram played with children. They played inside. "Oh no," said Mom. They went outside and played football. "Oh no," said Dad. Grand took the children out. They went in Grand's old car. Wilf and Wilma went too. What an old car! said Wilf. It's a good car, said Grand. Grand took them to the fun park. This looks fun, said Grand. Come on, everyone. The children began to run. They wanted to go on everything. Come on, Gran! They called. Look at this," said Keeper. "It's a castle. It's called Jumping Castle." The children went on the Jumping Castle. "This is fun," called Wilma. The children jumped and jumped and bounced and bounced. Come on, Gran! They called. Gran went on the castle. She jumped and bounced. Good old Gran! Called the children. Gran made a hole in the castle. Oh no! Said the children. The castle began to go down. A man ran up. He was cross with Gran. Look at my castle! He yelled. Go home! Yelled the man. And don't come back! Gran took the children home. Biff told Mom about the castle. Mom was cross with Gran. Gran was sad. Gran was in Chip's room. She looked at the magic key. The key was glowing. Gran picked up the key and ran into Bib's room. Look at this, she said. Oh no, said Keeper. It's the magic. The magic is working. The magic took them to a new adventure. Castle adventure. The magic took them to a castle. Three witches lived in the castle. They were nasty witches. One was a black witch. One was a red witch. One was a green witch. The magic took the children inside the castle. It took them to a room. A frog was in the room. I am a king, said the frog. I am the king of this castle. The witches turned me into a frog. Help me," he said. A witch was coming. It was the black witch. Look out," said the frog. The witch opened the door. Graham pushed the witch. Chip took the witch's keys. They ran out of the room. Chip locked the door. The witch couldn't get out. Everyone ran. Look out! Called Chip. A witch was coming. It was the Red Witch. I don't like witches, said Gran. She put a net over the witch. The witch couldn't get out. Good old Gran! Called Biff. 
Gran went to the Green Witch. I don't like witches, said Gran. I don't like nasty witches. Gran threw the witch on the floor. Help! yelled the witch. Good old Gran, said the children. Some frogs came in and jumped on the table. One was the king. Help us, he said. Biff and Gran looked in the witch's book. The frogs turned into people. Thanks, said the king. The witches turned into frogs. Gran put the book on the fire. Oh no, said the witches. The king had a party. Everyone went to it. What a good party, said Chip. What an adventure, said Biff. I like adventures, said Gran. Good old Gran, said everyone. The magic key was glowing. It's time to go, said Biff. Goodbye, said the king. The magic took them back to Biff's room. They fell on Biff's bed. Oh no, said Mom. Village in the snow. The children were at school. It was playtime. Come in, called Mrs. May. Mrs. May told the children a story. The story was about a village. The village was in the mountains. Everyone liked the story. It was called the village in the snow. The children went to Biff's room. They wanted an adventure. Biff picked up the magic key. The key began to glow. The magic is working, said Biff. The magic took the children to the village in the snow. It's lovely, said Biff. Keeper jumped in the snow. I like the snow, he called. This is fun. They played in the snow. They made a snowman and put Keeper's hat on top. They jumped in the snow. They threw snowballs. Look! said Wilma. They saw a little boy. The boy was pulling a toboggan. Some big boys ran up. They pushed the little boy over. They pushed the toboggan over and they ran away. The children ran up. They helped the little boy. Keeper picked up his hat. The little boy told them about the big boys. Keeper was cross. Keeper put on the little boy's hat. He put on his coat. Come on, he called. The big boys looked at Keeper. Keeper looked like the little boy. Come on, said the big boys. The children threw snowballs at the big boys. Help! Help! yelled the big boys. The big boys ran away. The little boy jumped and jumped in the snow. The children put the little boy on the toboggan. They pulled him home. The little boy lived with his grandfather. Grandfather gave the children a drink. The children told grandfather about the big boys. They told grandfather about the snowball fight. The children played in the snow. They went on the toboggan. This is fun, said Wolf. The magic key began to glow. It's time to go, said Biff. Come on. She said. The magic took the children home. What an adventure, said Chip.
What's it? Mom and Dad painted the kitchen. Dad painted the ceiling. Mom painted the walls. Mom pulled up the old carpet. The walls look good, she said. But this looks a mess. Dad looked at the floor. We need a new carpet, said Biff. Mom found the trap door. She pulled it up. Everyone looked. It's a cellar, said Dad. Mom went into the cellar. It looks big, she said. The children looked in. It looks dark, said Biff. It looks spooky, said Chip. Dad got a light. They went into the cellar. Keeper found an old sheet. I'm a ghost, he said. Look at this, said Keeper. What is it? asked Chip. I don't know, said Mom. And so what's it? said Dad. Wolf and Wilma came to play. They looked at the what's it. What is it? asked Wilma. It's a what's it, said Chip. We found it in the cellar. Two men came to the house. They came in a lorry. They took away the old things. One man looked at the what's it. What is it? he asked. So what's it? said Dad. The man took the what's it. They put it in a lorry. A car stopped. A lady jumped out and called to the man. Stop! she said. The lady wanted the what's it. She wanted it for a museum. The man put it in the car. The lady gave Dad some money. Come to the museum, she said, and bring the children. The what's it was in the museum. Mom and Dad went to see it. They took Biff, Chip and Keeper. So that's what it is, said Dad. Mom and Dad had a surprise. It was for the children. What is it? asked Biff. It's a what's it? said Dad. He pulled off the sheet. The what's it was a snooker table. It's brilliant, they said. Underground Adventure The children were in the cellar. They wanted to find a secret tunnel. The children looked everywhere. They tapped on the floor. They tapped on the walls. But there was no secret tunnel. It's no good, said Biff. Keeper ran to the cellar. He had the magic key. The key was glowing. They ran to Biff's bedroom. Come on, called Keeper. It's time for a magic adventure. The magic took them underground. They were in a big tunnel. Wilma picked up a lamp. Come on, she said. Let's go. There were elves in the tunnel. But they were shy. Oh no. They said, children. The children went down the tunnel. They didn't see the elves. This way, said Wilma. The children came to a big cave. Wow, said Biff. The elves looked at the children. Oh dear, said the elves. 
Oh dear, oh dear. The cave had an echo. Who? Cold keeper. Wow. Went the echo. Wow. Went keeper. The elves laughed. They laughed and laughed. The elves came out. They ran to say hello. Wow. They went. Whoa! Went the echo, and everyone laughed. The elves were sad. They had no work. Can you help? Said the elves. Our gold has run out. We don't know what to do. Wilma had a good idea. She told the elves what it was. The elves liked Wilma's idea. They painted some signs. The children helped. The elves put lights in the caves. The cave looked beautiful. People came to see them. The elves were happy. The elves were busy. Thanks to the children, they said. The magic key began to glow. It was time to go home. What an adventure! Said Wolf. I have a good idea. Said Chip. Visit the spooky cellar. Only ten penny. What do you think? Vanishing cream. The children were at school. They made a little theater. They made it out of a box. The children put on a play. Play was about a wizard. He was called Wizard Blot. Wizard Blot made mistakes. Wizard Blot made a spell. The spell went wrong. Oh dear! Oh dear! Said Wizard Blot. Everyone laughed. Everyone liked the play. Mrs. May liked Wizard Blot. Biff was in her room. The key began to glow. Chip, Chip, called Biff. Chip ran into Biff's bedroom. The magic took them inside the little house. The magic took them to Wizard Blot's house. The wizard wanted some help. Come in, said the wizard. I wanted one helper, but two will do. Come in, said the wizard. You can wash up, then you can tidy up. Biff and Chip looked at the mess. Don't be lazy, said the wizard, or I will turn you into frogs. Biff and Chip did the washing up. I don't like this," said Chip. "But I don't want to be a frog. I don't like ironing," said Biff. "But we don't want to be frogs." Oh no! Biff dropped the bottle. It was vanishing cream. Help," said Biff. "This is vanishing cream." Chip looked at his hands. "Oh no," he said. "Bits of us are vanishing." He rubbed his face. "Oh no," said Biff. "Your face is vanishing." A man came to the house. He climbed through the window. The man didn't see Biff and Chip. He took all the wizard's computer disks. Help! Help! Said the man. I'm being attacked by the washing. Wizard Blood came back. Biff told him about the vanishing cream. Chip gave Wizard Blood the computer disks. The wizard was pleased. 
It was time to go home. Thank you, said Wizard Blot. Do come again. Biff had a little bottle. Don't drop it, said Chip. It's vanishing cream. Vanishing cream. It's not fair. Mrs. May was ill. The children had a new teacher. He was called Mr. Fry. It was story time. The children sat in the reading corner. Mr. Fry had a new story. The story was about a king. He was called King Arthur. Here is King Arthur, said Mr. Fry. And here are his knights. They lived a long time ago. King Arthur had a round table. All the knights sat round it. They liked the round table. The children did a project. The boys were knights. It's not fair, said Biff. Biff wanted to be a knight. It's not fair, she said. Why can't girls be knights? Biff was in her room. She wanted to go skateboarding, but the magic key began to glow. Oh, blow! said Biff. I wanted to go skateboarding. The magic took Biff to King Arthur's castle. It put her in a dress. Yuck! said Biff. I wanted to be a knight. Knights don't wear dresses. Biff was cross with the magic. She saw some knights. Can I be a knight? She said. The knights laughed. But you are a girl, they said. Girls can't be knights. Biff got on her skateboard. You couldn't do that, she said. Now can I be a knight? The knights were amazed. We'll have to ask King Arthur, said the knights. The knights took Biff to King Arthur. This is Biff, they said. She wants to be a knight. King Arthur laughed. Girls can't be knights, he said. Why not? asked Biff. King Arthur called a meeting, but the knights argued. No one wanted to sit down. They all wanted to sit near King Arthur. Biff had a good idea. She spoke to King Arthur. Get a round table, she said. The knights liked the round table. It's brilliant, they said. Now we won't argue. The knights sat around the table. See, said Biff. Now can I be a knight? But everyone laughed. I'm sorry. Said King Arthur, but girls can't be knights. The magic adventure was over. It's not fair, said Biff. Girls are as good as boys. The great race. Gran wanted to buy a new car. Biff and Chip were sad. They liked Gran's old car. Gran liked this car. Biff was worried. The car was too fast for Gran. Gran bought the fast car. She drove it home. Oh no! said Dad. Mom was cross with Gran. That car is too fast, she said. Gran was upset. The magic key glowed. The magic took Biff and Chip. It took Gran too. The magic took them to a race. Come on, said Gran. This is my new car. Oh, Gran, 
said Biv. What would Mom say? Never mind, Mom, said Gran. Gran found the map. They all looked at it. A man looked at Gran. He was a bad man. He was called the Baron. The children looked at the Baron. The Baron looked at the children. Ha! said the Baron. You won't win. A man changed the signpost. Ha ha! said the man. Now the Baron will win. The map blew away. Which way? said Gran. Chip didn't know. They didn't see the signpost. Gran turned left. Ah! said the man. They came to the mountains. Slow down! shouted Biv. No, this is fun, said Gran. The Baron put oil on the road. That will do it, he said. That will stop them. The car skidded on the oil. It crashed through the fence and went down the mountain. Hold on, shouted Gran. Oh no, shouted Biff. Oh help, shouted Chip. The Baron was behind. Gran was in front. She was winning the race. Biff looked behind. Come on, Gran! She shouted. Which way? Called Gran. Chip didn't know. Gran turned on the bridge. Gran turned onto a bridge. The bridge was dangerous. Not this way. Called Chip. The bridge broke. The Baron's car crashed down into the river. Gran won the race. Hooray! Called Biff and Chip. The magic key glowed. Gran took the fast car back. She bought a little car. This one will do, she said. A monster mistake. Mom and Gran went on holiday. They went to Scotland. They took the children. They stayed in the cottage. The cottage was by a lake. It had a boat. I like it here, said Biff. We can go sailing. And fishing, said Keeper. Everyone had a good time. Biff and Keeper went fishing. Gran and Chip painted the picture. Mom sat in the sun and read the book. This is fun, she said. Everyone looked at Gran's picture. Oh, Gran, said Chip. She had painted the monster. Keeper looked at the monster. Gran laughed. There's no such a thing," she said. Mom went shopping. She took Keeper. Biff and Chip stayed with Gran. Mom looked at the shops. "Let's get Dad's a postcard," she said. Keeper went into a shop. "I want a monster for me and a postcard for Dad," he said. Keeper posted the card to Dad. I wish Dad was here, he said. Gran wanted to play a joke on Mom. Let's make a monster, she said. I don't get it, said Biff. Wait and see, said Gran. They put the monster in the lake. It made the children laugh. It looks brilliant," said Chip. "What a joke," said Biff. "What a good joke to play on Mom." 
Mom and Keeper came back. Gram pulled the rope. The monster went across the lake. A real monster," said Keeper. "I don't believe it," said Mom. "There's no such thing." Some people saw Gran's monster. They were amazed. They took photographs. The children watched television. Gran's monster," said Chip. "Oh no!" groaned Biff. The next day, lots of people came. There were lots and lots and lots of people. They wanted to see the monster. Oh, Gran! Said Mom. Now look what you have done. Gran told everyone about the monster. It was just a joke, she said. A man from the television came. Mom was cross with Gran, but everyone laughed. Gran was sorry. A monster, she said. There's no such thing. The new baby. Joe had some good news. She was expecting a baby. What good news? Said everyone. Wilma's mom found the old buggy. Oh look! Said Wilma's dad. Wilf had it when he was a baby. The buggy looked a bit scruffy. A wheel had come off. We can do it up. Said Wilma's mom. Wilma told Biff and Chip, "Joey is expecting a baby." She said, "What good news?" Said Chip. Biff and Chip went home. Joey is expecting a baby. Said Chip. What good news? Said Mom. Dad found the old cot. Oh look! Said Mom. Keeper had it. When he was a baby, the cot looked a bit scruffy. He needed a new mattress. We can do it up," said Dad. Biff and Chip told Keeper, "Joey is expecting a baby." They said, "That's brilliant," said Keeper. Keeper found an old toy rabbit. It looked a bit scruffy. Can we do it up? He asked. Keeper was in Miss Green's class. He told Miss Green about Joe's baby. How exciting! said Miss Green. Keeper looked puzzled. When will Joe's baby come? He asked. Miss Green told the children about babies. Moms and dads came to school. They told the children about babies too. Keeper played with the baby. He gave it a rattle. The baby made a funny noise. The children made a book. The book was about babies. Keeper gave Joe the book. Biff and Chip gave Joe the cot. Joe was pleased. Wilf wanted the baby to be a girl. Wilma wanted it to be a boy. So Wilf made a big chart. The baby is coming," said Joe. "It's time to go." "How exciting!" said Wolf. Wilma called her mom. "Joe's baby is coming," she called. "How exciting!" said Wilma's mom. Joe went to the hospital. She went in the car. "Good luck," called Wilma's mom. Joe was in hospital. She had a baby girl. She's called Vicky," said Joe. Joe brought Vicky home. Everyone wanted to see the new baby. Joe looked at Keeper. "You know about babies," she said. "Do you want to help?" Keeper looked at Vicky. "No, thank you," said Keeper. Camping adventure. 
Mom and Dad went camping. They took the children. They went to a farm. Mom and Dad had a new tent. They put it up. Wolf helped. Wilma got some water. I like it here, she said. I like camping. Mr. Jones was the farmer. He had to milk the cows. Come and watch, he said. What a lot of cows, said Wolf. Mr. Jones laughed. We milk them every day, he said. Mom wanted some milk. She went to the farmhouse. I want some eggs too, said Mom. Mrs. Jones was expecting a baby. She was expecting it soon. It may come today, she said. Dad cooked supper. I like it here, said Wolf. It's fun in this tent. Everyone went to bed, but there was a storm. Nobody could sleep. The wind blew. Everyone had to get up. The wind blew the tent down. They had to go to the farmhouse. Mr. Jones called Mom. The baby is coming, he said. Mrs. Jones had to go to hospital. She got in the car. Mom helped her. The storm got worse. The wind blew and blew. The wind blew a big tree down. The car couldn't get past. Mr. and Mrs. Jones went back to the house. Mr. Jones called for help. He called the hospital. A helicopter is coming, he said. Mr. Jones pointed to a field. The helicopter can land there, he said. Mr. Jones got some bags. The children helped. They got some big stones. They made a big cross out of the bags. They put stones on the bags. The helicopter came. It landed near the cross. At last, said Mr. Jones. There was a doctor in the helicopter. Come on, said Mr. Jones. The doctor ran to the house, but Mom came to the door. She was laughing. Too late, said Mom. Mrs. Jones has had the baby. She's had a baby boy. Everyone looked at the baby. He's very sweet, said Wilma. Will he like camping? Scarecrows. Biff and Chip had a little garden. They planted seeds and they put in plants. The birds liked the garden. They ate the seeds and packed the plants. Biff was cross. Look at the birds, she said. Go away, go away. Biff and Chip had an idea. Let's make a scarecrow, they said. What a good idea, said Mom. They got some old clothes and made a scarecrow's body. Mom helped them. Biff got a bag. Chip painted a face on it. Mom made the scarecrow's hair. Chip wanted the scarecrow to be a boy. He called it Fred. Biff wanted it to be a girl. All scarecrows are boys, said Chip. The key began to glow. The magic took them inside the little house. The magic took them to a field. The scarecrow came to life. I'm alive, called Fred. Fred jumped in the air. It's magic, he called. There were some scarecrows in the lane. Fred waved at them. Fred ran up to the scarecrows. Hello, he called. Where are you going? A scarecrow pointed to a barn. 
We are going to the barn dance. You can come too. Then the scarecrows looked at Biff and Chip. Oh dear, you can't come. Biff and Chip were scarecrows. They couldn't go to the dance, but Fred had an idea. Fred made Biff and Chip into scarecrows. They went to the dance. The band began to play. Come on, called Fred. Let's dance. Biff began to dance with the scarecrows. This is fun, called Chip. Biff danced with Fred. Chip danced with Biff. They all danced with the scarecrows. See, said the Biff. They're girl scarecrows. I told you so. Suddenly, the key glowed. It was time to go home. Oh no, said Fred. The magic took them home. Biff and Chip had an idea. I didn't know there were girl scarecrows, said Mom. Well, there are, said Chip. Noah's Ark Adventure It rained and rained. It rained all day long. The children were fed up. The children went outside. They wanted to play, but it was too wet. Dad looked out of the window. Come inside, he said. It's too wet to play outside. The children went to Biff's room. Suddenly, the key began to glow. It was time for a magic adventure. What a good job, said Keeper. I want a magic adventure. I'm fed up with all the rain. The magic key took them into a new adventure. But it was raining. Oh no, said Keeper. We don't want an adventure in the rain. The children saw a boat. What is it? asked Keeper. It's Noah's Ark, said Biff. Noah has to put the animals on the ark or they will drown, said Chip. It's raining so much, said Biff. The water's going to cover everything. Don't worry, said Chip. Noah will save all the animals. Will he save us too? said Keeper. Hello, said Noah. What do you want? Have you come to help? Noah looked at the water. He pointed at the ark. I want some help, he said. The children looked at the animals. It is time to put the animals on the ark, said Noah. The animals went on to the ark. They went on in twos. First, Noah put the big animals on. A man pushed the elephants. They pulled the crocodiles up in a big net. A camel didn't want it to go onto the ark. They pushed it and pulled it. All the animals are on, said Noah. It's time to go. Please get onto the ark. The children went onto the ark. Noah looked at Floppy. Stop, shouted Noah. I'm sorry, said Noah. We put two dogs on the ark. We can't have three dogs. The children couldn't leave Floppy. Floppy can't go on the ark, so we won't go on it, said Biff. The ark sailed away. The children floated in Noah's big umbrella. It's still raining, said Biff. Just then, the magic key began to glow. The magic took the children home. What an adventure, said Biff. Oh no, said Keeper. A new classroom. Some people came to the school. They put a fence across the playground. 
The children looked at the fence. What is it for? asked Wolf. Nobody knew. A lorry came to the school. It had blocks on it. What are they for? asked Biff. Then a digger came. The children were excited. Some men dug a long trench across the playground. What is it for? everyone asked. It was time to go in, but the children didn't want to. They liked the digger. Mrs. May looked at the trench. It's for a new classroom, she said. The children were excited. They wanted to find out about the new classroom. The children looked at some books. Will found a book about diggers. Chip painted a picture of one. Mrs. May took the children outside. They talked about the digger. Mrs. May took a photograph. Everyone looked at the blocks. The classroom will go on the blocks, said Mrs. May. Then a crane came to the school. The children were excited. They looked at the driver. What is the crane for? asked Biff. Wait and see, said Mrs. May. The children watched the crane. It lifted the classroom over the wall. Everyone watched the classroom. Don't drop it, called the chip. Biff looked at the classroom. Something was wrong. Mrs. May, Mrs. May, called Biff. Don't shout, Biff, said Mrs. May. The crane put the classroom down. It put the classroom on the blocks. Crane lifted the roof and put it on the classroom. Something was wrong. Mrs. May, called Biff. Something is wrong. Don't shout, Biff, said Mrs. May. Everyone gasped. The classroom was upside down. Oh dear, said Mrs. May. I said something was wrong, said Biff, but nobody would listen. The crane put the classroom the right way up. The children wanted to look inside. The children went inside. Wilf saw a door. What's in here? asked Wilf. Everyone gasped. Oh no! said Wilf. Mom to the rescue. Mom and Dad went to a car boot sale. They took the children. Mom looked at the dinghy. She called Dad. They looked at the dinghy. What is it? asked Dad. It's a dinghy, said Mom. Mom wanted the dinghy. She called the children. Look at this, she said. The children looked at the dinghy. What is it? they asked. It's a dinghy, said Mom. They took the dinghy home. Dad pumped it up, but it went down again. Mom mended the dinghy. She put a patch on it. The children helped. Dad put the dinghy on the car. They took a picnic and went to the river. Dad looked at the river. He pointed at the weir. The weir is dangerous, he said. Mom and Dad had a good idea. Let's put everything in the dinghy. Everyone can help, they said. They found a good spot for the picnic. The children paddled the dinghy. It was time for the picnic. Mom and Dad put the rug down and got the picnic out. Floppy ran out of the water. He shook the water over Dad. 
Go away, Floppy, said Dad. The river was busy. Biff and Chip watched the boat go by. Biff liked the big boat. I wish we could go on a big boat, she said. It was time to go home. What a good day, said Dad. It was a good picnic. Look, said Biff. There is nobody on that boat. My boat is in danger," called the lady. "Help! Get my boat!" Mom put the dinghy in the river. She paddled to the boat. "Be careful!" called everyone. Mom climbed on the boat. She started the engine. She was just in time. Mom brought the boat back. "Hooray!" everyone shouted. Mom to the rescue," said Keeper. Dad let go of the dinghy rope. The dinghy went over the weir. "Oh no!" said everyone. The lady had an idea. "I will lend you my boat to say thank you," she said. The family had a holiday on the boat, thanks to the dinghy," said Mom. Sleeping Beauty. The children went to pick blackberries. There were lots of blackberries. The bushes had thorns. Mind the thorns, called Wilma. Ow! said Chip. The thorns are sharp. Wilma saw some big blackberries. She had some thick gloves and some clippers. Wilma put on the thick gloves. She cut the stems with the clippers. The children went home. They ate some blackberries. Yuck! This isn't ripe," said Biff. Biff picked up the magic key. It began to glow. The magic is working," said Biff. The magic took them to a castle. Wow! Look at these thorns," said Keeper. A man was stuck in the thorns. "Ow! Help!" he called. "I can't get free." Wilma put on gloves. She got the clippers. Then she cut the man free. "Thanks," said the man. "I wanted to get to the castle." But I got stuck in the thorns. I am a prince," said the man. "I need to get in the castle. There is a princess in there. We can help," said Wilma. "We can lend you these clippers." The thorns were sharp, but the prince cut a way in. "Mind the thorns," he called. At last, they got to the castle. The prince pushed the door open. They went inside the castle. Everyone was fast asleep. There was dust on everything. Yuck," said Keeper. "Look at the cobwebs." There were cobwebs everywhere. There were even cobwebs on the people. At last, they found the princess. She was fast asleep. Now what do I do? said the prince. You kiss the princess, said Keeper. Then she wakes up. Everyone knows that. The prince kissed the princess. Yuck, said Chip. The princess woke up. At last, said the princess. Everyone in the castle woke up. The magic key glowed. Time to go," said Biff. "The prince doesn't need us now." The magic adventure was over. Dad was fast asleep. "He's no sleeping beauty," said Biff. 
The Adventure Park. The children went to an adventure park. They were excited. They all wanted to go on the treetop adventure. This looks exciting, said Chip. Chip put on a harness. The harness had a clip at the front. Chip went across the log bridge. Come on, Biff, he called. You can't fall off. Biff began to go across the bridge. This is exciting, she said. Keeper went on the rope runway. Off you go, said Mom. Here I come, called Keeper. He went down fast. I want to go next, said Biff. Biff and Dad went in a red canoe. Come on, called Biff. You won't fall in. Mom, Chip, and Keeper went in a green canoe. They went across the lake. It was fun in the canoes. Chip saw a big bird in the sky. Look at that big bird, he said. What do you think it is? It was time for a barbecue. They all helped to bring the food. Dad lit the barbecue. I'm hungry, said Keeper. It won't be long, said Dad. They all sat at the table. Dad was busy. There was a lot to cook. This looks good, said Dad. Look at this chicken leg. What a good cook I am. A big bird swooped down. It had straps on its legs. It took the chicken leg from Dad's hand. The bird flew back into a tree. It began to eat the chicken leg. The bird sat in the tree. Everyone looked up at it. It must be hungry, said Biff. Dad got his mobile phone. A bird has escaped, he said. A woman came to catch the bird. It flew down and landed on her arm. This bird is called a falcon, said the woman. It took Dad's chicken leg, said Biff. The woman took the falcon home. Everyone went with her. They looked at all the birds. What beautiful birds, said Chip. They went back, but the chicken legs were burnt. I'm still hungry, said Keeper. Keeper and the Trolls Mom was going to make a cake. She wanted Keeper to help. First, Mom gave Keeper an apron. Then she looked at his hands. What dirty hands! said Mom. Mom looked at Keeper's nails. Keeper's nails were long. Let me cut them, said Mom. Keeper made a fuss. He didn't want Mom to cut his nails. He didn't want to wash his hands. I must cut your nails, said Mom. No, 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 said Keeper. And he ran out of the room. Keeper ran into Biff's room. Biff looked at Keeper's long, dirty nails. Yuck, said Biff. You look like a troll. It's not fair, said Keeper. But then the key began to glow. It was time for a magic adventure. The magic took them to a stream. There was a bridge over the stream. Biff wanted to cross the bridge. We can't pick the flowers over there, she said. Come on! Keeper ran after Biff, but there were trolls under the bridge. Suddenly, the trolls jumped out. Oh no, said Keeper. Trolls can be nasty. Hip hip hooray, sang the trolls. This is the troll bridge. 
do come across. Will you eat us up? Said Keeper. No, no, we will not. Sang the Troll. We are not nasty. Said the Troll. We just look nasty. Nobody likes us. Said the Troll. We want to have a party, but nobody wants to come. The trolls went under the bridge. They got the party food, and set out the party. Tuck in, said the troll. The trolls had long, dirty nails. Yuck, said Keeper. Look at her long, dirty nails. Look at the troll food, said Beef. Have a slug bun, said the troll, or some slimy jelly. Have a mud mint, said another troll. Mud mints are yummy. Yuck, said Biff. Have some bug pie, said the troll. Yuck, said Keeper. Look at these hands. Suddenly, the key began to glow. The adventure was over. At last, said Keeper. The magic took them home. Keeper washed his hands. Then he went to get his nails cut. I'm not a troll," said Keeper. "Trolls have dirty hands and long nails. Yuck!" Safari Adventure. Chip and Wolf were tracking Dad. This is a good game," said Wolf. Put this in your hat," said Chip. "Dad won't see us. Then we can track him." Chip and Wolf hid in the trees. "Keep down," said Chip. "Here comes Dad." Dad went past. He looked for the boys, but he couldn't see them. Floppy went sniff, sniff, sniff. "Go away, Floppy," said Chip. But Floppy wouldn't go. Chip and Wolf went home. They looked for Biff, but she was not there. The key began to glow. It took Chip and Wolf into a magic adventure. The magic took them to Africa. Some zebra were going to drink at a pool. Chip and Wolf looked around. A herd of zebra," said Wolf. "Don't let them see us." Chip saw a lorry by a tree. Some men got out. They began to creep up to the zebra. "What do they want?" said Wolf. "Oh no," said Wolf. "They are going to catch a zebra. We must stop them," said Chip. He had an idea. Come on," he said. The boys ran to the lorry. Chip pressed the horn. Beep! It went. Beep! Went the horn again. The zebra looked up. The horn scared the zebra. They ran away. The man was scared too. They ran back to the lorry. Quick, let's go! One called. Quick, Wolf," said Chip. "Run!" They ran away. Chip and Wolf hid in a bush. They didn't want the man to see them. The man couldn't start the lorry. Suddenly, a jeep drove up. There were rangers in the jeep. The man jumped out of the lorry and ran away. The rangers chased after them. A ranger shook Chip's hand. "Thank you," he said. "You saved the zebra." The magic key began to glow. It was time to go. It had been an exciting adventure. Why wouldn't the lorry start? Asked Wolf. "Ha! I took the key," said Chip. "There's run." Dad went running. 
Floppy went with him. Dad went running every day. I wanted to get fit, he said. Biff and Chip went with Dad. They went on bikes. Keep going, Dad, said Biff. Dad had an idea. He wanted to do the fun run. What a good idea, said Mom. But it's a long way to run. Biff and Chip told everyone. Dad is going to do a fun run, said Biff. It's to help children in need, said Chip. Will you sponsor Dad? It was the day of the fun run. They all went to the park. It's a long way to run, said Chip. Go, called the man, and the fun run began. Go on, Dad, called Keeper. The fun run went around the park. Ten times round the park, said Dad. It's a long way to run. Dad ran well. He ran round the park four times. There was still a long way to go. Oh no! Dad's foot went into a hole. Dad fell down. Ouch! said Dad. My foot! A man looked at Dad's foot. You must rest it, he said. You can't run on it. Dad couldn't finish the fun run. What bad luck, said Mom. Poor old Dad. Dad was upset. Oh no, he said. Now I can't help children in need. Wilf had an idea. We can't push you in the old prom, he said. Wilf and his mom ran home. They got the old prom and ran back with it. Come on, Dad, said Chip. Get in the prom. We will all push you, said Mom. Dad sat in the prom. They pushed him round the park. Hooray! Everyone called. It's not far now. But it's a long way to push a prom, said Mom. Keep going, said Dad. It was the end of the run. The wheels came off the prom. Dad fell out. What a way to end the run, said Dad. But thank you for pushing me. That was a fun run, said Keeper, but it was a long way to push your dad. Drawing Adventure Wilma had a lot of drawings. They were all pictures of girls. I like drawing clothes, Wilma said. Biff looked at Wilma's pictures. They are good, she said. Chip was painting a picture. He was painting a volcano. Wilma moved her leg. She kicked Chip's water over. Whoops, said Wilma. Sorry. The water ran over Chip's picture. Chip was cross. My picture is a mess now, he said. Chip flicked paint over Wilma's picture. Your drawings are silly, he said. Biff told Chip to say sorry. Chip was too cross to say sorry. He flicked paint at Wilma. Then the key began to glow. The magic took them to a volcano. It looked like Chip's painting. But where was Chip? Look at those girls, gasped Wilma. They look like the ones in my drawings. Look at their clothes. The girls called to Wilma. Do you like my top? said the girl. Do you like my boots? Suddenly the volcano began to spit out blobs of red paints. Splat! A big blob landed by Biff. 
Come on, run! Yelled Biff. Run, or the volcano will get us. I can't run in these boots, said the girl. Run! Yelled Wilma. We can't, said the girl. I can't run in this dress. Splat! Red blobs landed everywhere. It's red paint, said Biff. Splat! A red blob hit a girl. Red paint began to gush out of the volcano. It looked like a big red river. Wilma had an idea. She began to draw jeans and tops. Biff helped her. Quick, put these on," said Wilma. "Oh, we like these," said the girls. "Now run!" called Wilma. They all ran. She was in the paint river. "Help! Help!" he called. "Get me out!" Biff and Wilma saw Chip. Stop! They called. We must get him out. Wilma had an idea. She drew a long rope. Hold on, Chip! She called. They pulled Chip out. I'm glad this is only paint and not a real volcano, said Biff. Phew! Said Chip. I am glad you pulled me out. The magic key began to glow. Now, are you sorry, Chip? Said Biff. Chip had a blob of paint on him. I am, he said. Sorry. Highland Games. The Robinson family went on holiday to Scotland. The mountains seem to go on forever," said Chip. "This part of Scotland is fantastic." Keeper drew a picture of the mountains. Biff took a photo. "Look at that big sign," said Biff. "It says Highland Games." Let's go and watch them," said Dad. "It will be fun." The band of pipers was playing. They are playing bagpipes," said Chip. "What a fantastic sound," said Biff. "And they are wearing kilts. These men are throwing hammers," said Dad. "Let's watch how they throw them." Wow," said Biff. "What a throw! I bet you can't do that, Dad." That man is tossing the cable," said Dad. "Watch how he throws it." "Phew," said Keeper. "What a throw! I bet you can't do that, Dad." A man lifted an enormous log. It was the biggest log of all, and he was the winner. He must be really strong," said Chip. "I bet Dad can't do that." A woman spoke to them. "There are events for children," she said. The children were excited. "Can we have a go?" they asked. Biff and Chip won a race. Keeper came second in a race. Mom came third in a race. Your turn, Dad," they all said. "I will show you," said Dad. "I will throw the hammer." "This is just for fun," said the man. "You must put on a kilt to do it." Dad picked up the hammer. He spun round, and round and round. Then he let go. Oh no! Dad went flying and fell in some straw. You win a prize," said the woman. 
but not for throwing the hammer. Is for being the first man to thrown by a hammer, she said. The orchid thief, Biff, Chip, Wilf, and Wilma went to Holly Blue Fan Nature Reserve. Sally, the nature ranger, met them. You can't count butterflies, said Sally. Wilma wanted to see the orchids. I will show you one later, said Sally. They ticked the list each time they saw one. I have seen five of the blue ones, said Chip, and three of these. We've counted lots of butterflies, said Wilma. Can we see the orchids now? Sally took them to the one of the orchids. It's been dug up, she gasped. Sally was upset. She went off to report the stolen orchid. Who would do that, said Biff. What's that man doing, asked Chip. Is he digging something up? He's getting on his bike. Quick! We must stop him, said Chip. I will run and tell Sally, said Biff. They raced after the man. Don't let him get away, yelled Wilf. The children raced as fast as they could. Stop! called Chip, but the man didn't stop. He kept going. Sally ran up the path with Biff. Stop! yelled Wolf. The man stopped. What's going on? he asked. This is Alex, said Sally. He is a botanist. He walks here. Sorry, Alex, said Chip. We thought you were the orchid thief. Alex gave a grin. Don't worry, he said. You were just trying to help. What's that lady doing? Asked Chip. Don't start that again, said Wolf. She's just looking at the flowers. One of the orchids is growing there, said Sally. We'd better check. Oh no, said Sally. Another orchid has been dug up. I bet that woman has stolen them, gasped Sally. We must stop her. They all ran after the woman. Alex took the bag from the woman. There were the orchids. Well done, said Sally. We got the orchids back, thanks to you, and we got to see them," said Wilma. Rats. Biff, Chip, and Keeper had a magic key. When it glowed, the magic took them into an exciting adventure. They didn't know when the key might glow. And they didn't know why it glowed. It just did. Whenever the key glowed, the magic took them into the little house in Bib's bedroom. Chip had learned the new tune on his recorder. Listen to this, Biff," he said. Biff was looking sad. "What's the matter?" asked Chip. Biff had been reading a story. It's such a sad story," said Biff. "It's about rats." "Rats?" said Chip. "Why is it sad?" Just then, the magic key glowed. It was time for an adventure. The magic took the children to a town by a river. There were mountains far off. It's a pretty town," gasped Keeper. "But I can see rats," 
Lots of rats. A rat ran past Chip's feet. Chip jumped out of the way. I can hear a band, said Biff. Look, people are coming down the street. The people went to see the mayor. How can we read the town of rats? They shouted. Then an odd-looking man called out. I can get rid of them, he said. But you must pay me well. We will pay you, said the mayor. But get rid of the rats first. The man went out on the street. He began to play a tune on a pipe. At once, the rats ran after him. All the rats are going, said Keeper. The piper's tune must be magic. I love to play like that," said Chip. The piper went back to the mayor. "I have rid you of the rats," he said. "Now pay up. We don't need to pay you," the mayor said. "The rats have gone. She will be sorry," said Biff. "You will be sorry," said the piper. He began to play a tune on his pipe. The piper played the magic tune. All the children began to run after him. Chip and Keeper began to run after the piper too. Biff pulled Chip and Keeper back. "Stop!" called Biff. "Don't go!" Biff looked at the magic key. "Phew!" I'm glad it's glowing," she said. "How did the story end?" said Keeper. "You had better read it," said Biff. A pet called Cucumber. A letter came from Uncle Max. He had sent some photographs. Mom read the letter out. I am off exploring again. Please look after my little pet. What kind of pet? said Dad. Mom read on. She is called Cucumber, and she will be easy to feed. I think it's a kitten, said Biff. I think it's a gerbil, said Chip. No. It will be a puppy," said Keeper. "I bet she's a gorilla," groaned Dad. Just then, Uncle Max arrived. He came in a jeep full of stuff. "Did you get my letter?" he called. He told Dad to carry a tank, and he asked Mom to carry a box. "I will bring my little pet," he said. Here she is," said Uncle Max. He put the bag down gently. "Meet Cucumber," he said. "A snake," said Dad. "I knew it." "At least it's not a gorilla," said Biff. "She eats crickets, flies, and worms," said Uncle Max. "Don't let her escape." Oh, and spray her tank with water. Goodbye," he called. "I'll be back in a few weeks' time." "Oh no!" groaned Dad. They all looked at Cucumber. "Now what do we do?" asked Mom. Anina had come to play. "What a beautiful snake," she said. We've got a gutter snake at home. She's quite harmless," said Anina. "But don't handle her too much at first. Let her settle in." "I'm not sure I like snakes," said Mom. "What a shame," said Anina. "They make very good pets." 
Every day, Anina came to help look after Cucumber. She told them how to feed her, and how to pick her up, and how to clean out her tank. In the end, Mom held Cucumber. She began to like the snake. I'm not afraid of her now, she said. Biff and Dad were not sure. I like snakes, said Dad, but not in my house. Mrs. May let the children bring the two snakes to school. Anina gave a talk to the class. Snakes are amazing creatures. A message came from Uncle Max. I won't be back for a year, he said. Why don't you keep cucumber? I'm not sure we want to, said Biff, but I have a good idea. They gave cucumber to Anina. Have a real cucumber in return, she said. Bushfire. Biff, Anina, and Nadim were watching a film about bushfires in Australia. What happens to the animals when there are fires? Asked Nadim. I don't know, said Biff. The magic key began to glow. It was time for an adventure. The magic key took them to a beach. Oh no! Look at all that smoke," said Biff. A boy ran out of the sea. "Nan!" he yelled. "There's a bushfire. We should go." "Quick, Ben!" shouted Nan. "We must run home. I will call the fire service. Can we help?" asked Anina. Ben said that they must run back to his house. You can help us spray water on the roof and walls. It's hard for koalas when there are bushfires, panted Ben. Birds can fly away, but not the koalas. The helicopters will come soon to drop water, said Nan. But we can't wait. Quick! Get the hoses going. Biff and Anina found the hose. Nadim turned it on. They aimed the water at the walls. Ben, run and tell old Mrs. Wilson to come outside with us," said Nan. "We must all get ready to leave." Ben and Nadim shouted and banged at Mrs. Wilson's door, but she didn't come and open it. They raced to the back of the house. They ran inside, but they still couldn't find Mrs. Wilson. Just then, they saw the old lady. "I was looking for Bernard," she said. "Where's the helicopter?" said Biff. "I can hear it," said Nina. Just then, the helicopter flew over. It began to dump water on the trees nearby. How does that help? Asked Nadim. If the trees are really wet, the fire won't spread this way, said Ben. Another helicopter flew over. It dumped water on the trees behind the houses. The pilot waved to the children. It will come back with more water," said Nan. "But we must leave soon. A koala with a joy," said Nina. "They'll be hot," said Nan. "And they might be thirsty." "Do they drink water?" asked Biff. "Let's see," said Nan. She filled Bunnip's bowl with water. The helicopters have stopped the fire for now, but we must be on our way," 
said Nan. Thank you for helping. It's good we could help," said Biff. And we have seen koalas," said Nadine. The magic key began to glow. What a scary adventure," said Biff. "But at least we helped the koalas," said Nina. Bessie's flying circus. Biff, Chip, Wilf, and Wilma went to an aircraft museum. They saw a plane with two wings. It's called the biplane," said Wilf. "I bet it's cold when you fly," said Biff. "I would like to fly a plane one day," said Wilma. The children were in Biff's bedroom. They were reading about the first ever air shows. Suddenly, the magic key began to glow. It took the children into an adventure. The children were at an air show. It was Bessie's flying circus. Six planes were flying together. I like to do that," said Wilma. "Me too," said Chip and Wilf. I bet that's cold," said Beef. Bessie was the pilot of the plane in front. There were people standing on the wings. Look at the wing workers," said Wilf. "They must be brave." "I'd like to do that," said Wilma. After the first show had finished. The children saw Bessie. Let's talk to her," said Wilma. Wilma told Bessie that she wanted to learn to fly just like her. "I'm sure you can," said Bessie. A woman went by with a heavy bag. Wilf asked if he could help. "No, go away!" The woman snapped. "Why was she so nasty?" said Wilf. I bet she's up to something. He crept after her. The woman took a can out of her bag. She put it by Bessie's plane and took the can that was there. Wilf ran to tell Bessie. A woman has changed over the petrol cans. He said, "Why?" I bet the other can is full of water," gasped Bessie. "My plane won't fly with water in the tank." They ran back, but it was too late. Bessie's man had put the water in. "I have an idea," said Bessie. "This is a new kind of plane," said Bessie. "No one has seen it before," she told the children to get in. You are my first passengers," she said. People looked surprised. Bessie's new plane took off. A huge banner flew behind the plane. It said, "Bessie's passenger service." The children waved to the people. "This is exciting," said Biff. "And it's not cold." Why did the woman want to stop you flying? Asked Wolf. She doesn't like me, said Bessie. But she won't stop me, she said. I won't let her win. The magic key began to glow. I'm going to fly a plane one day, said Wilma. We will be your passengers, said Chip. Queen of the Waves. Biff, Chip, and Keeper were at the seaside with Mom and Dad. They were on holiday with Gran. They watched some children on bodyboards in the sea. That looks fun," said Chip. "I wish we had bodyboards. Then we could ride the waves." 
Later, they saw a shop that sold bodyboards. Gran spoke to Dad. Will you let me get one each for the children? It can't be my holiday treat. It took a long time to choose them, but in the end, the children each had a bodyboard. Thanks, Gran, said Biff. We can't wait to ride the waves. That afternoon, there were good waves rolling onto the beach. Wow, called Biff, as she rode in on her bodyboard. This is fun. Where is Gran? asked Mom. Mom and Dad watched the children having fun. I don't know where Gran is, said Dad. Mom and Dad gasped. It's Gran, said Dad. Whatever next? Gran had her own bodyboard. Why should the children have all the fun? She said. Gran went out into the waves. Go for it, Gran! yelled Keeper. Gran was good on her bodyboard. Whoever would have thought it? gasped Dad. I would, sighed Mom. As Gran rode the wave, you know Gran. Soon a crowd was watching Gran. Wow, said the man to keep her. Is that your grandmother? The crowd grew bigger. Oh no, groaned Dad. I'm not enjoying this. That was fun, said Gran. But look what a mess my hair is now. A man took a photo of Gran. You are queen of the waves, he said. Gran went to have her hair done. That looks better, she said. A woman with a little girl saw Gran. It's the queen of the waves, said the woman. Please may Victoria take a photo of you? Gran stood by the sea wall to have her photo taken. The tide had come in. Oh no! A huge wave broke over Gran. Splash! She was soaked. Gran is queen of the waves and no mistake, said Dad. Crab Island. The children were excited. They were going to spend the day on Crab Island. They had to get there by boat. Mr. Salt was going to take them. It will be a real adventure, said Chip. There's a cave on the island. It has a good beach. So we can go bodyboarding, explained Biff. It will be a long day, said Dad. So there's a lot to take with us. At last, Dad and Mr. Salt had loaded all the things in the dinghy. Mom ran up with a big plastic tub. Don't forget the food, she said. They set off for Crab Island. A speedboat went past. Hold on, said Dad. Speedboats can make quite big waves. At last, they got to Crab Island. Dad pulled the dinghy onto the beach. I will be back at six o'clock, called Mr. Salt. Have fun. We must set up camp," said Dad. "Bring all our stuff up here. I will bring the food," said Chip. Chip gasped. The food was missing. The plastic tub has fallen off the dinghy. I will call Mr. Salt," said Dad. "Oh no, my phone has no signal. 
we are on this island with no food. They had bottles of drink, but all they had to eat was a bag of apples and one sweet each. I'm hungry, moaned Keeper, and it's not lunch time yet. How about a swim? suggested Dad. It's good for bodyboarding. Maybe later, said Biff. Dad took them on a beach hunt. Let's see what we can find, he said. Do we have to do this? said Chip. We're so hungry. Look, what's floating in the sea, said Dad. The box of food. Time for a swim, yelled Chip. They all raced into the water. They pulled the box out and looked inside. All the food was there. Hooray! Our food has floated in on the tide, yelled Chip. Biff bit into a sandwich. Hmm, she said. Seafood. Where next? It was a rainy afternoon. Let's play a board game, said Lee. Can you keep a secret? asked Keeper. We have something more exciting than a board game. It's a magic key. In Bib's room, Keeper showed Lee the magic key. It can't take us anywhere, said Biff. Could it take us to the land of dinosaurs? asked Lee. Yes, Keeper said. We could slide down a dinosaur's neck while it eats leaves. But not all dinosaurs ate leaves, said Chip. Some of them ate meat. I didn't think of that, said Keeper. The key did not glow. Biff picked up the key. I wish it would take us to a big football match next. I could score the winning goal in the last minute, she said. But what if you miss the shot? asked Keeper. Biff thought about this. Maybe I need to practice a bit more first, she said. The key still did not glow. What about you, Chip? Asked Keeper. I'd go to a spaceship heading for the stars. Answered Chip. But you might be old before you reach any, Biff said. The key still had not glowed. Are you sure it's magic? Asked Lee. Yes, said Biff. You just never know when it will work. The children decided to play a board game after all. They went downstairs. Floppy was left alone in Bib's room. Only he saw the key begin to glow. The magic key took him into the little house in the corner of the room. Floppy went to best place ever for dogs. There were parks to run in. There were sticks to fetch and cats to run after. The key started to glow again. Before he went home, Floppy grabbed a huge bone for himself. The children had finished their game. It wasn't a magic adventure, but it was fun, said Chip. Floppy came into the room. He was carrying a little bone in his mouth. Where have you been, Floppy? asked Biff. I wonder where he got that bone, said Lee. Gotcha! A boy came for the afternoon with his mom. My name is Kevin, he said. Kevin had a can in his bag. Do you want some crisps? he asked. A toy snake? 
shot out of the can. Egg, said Chip. Gotcha! cried Kevin. Kevin loves playing tricks, explained his mom. It was just a joke, said Kevin. Do you want a sweet? Thanks, said Beef and Chip. Oh no, said Beef. Your lips are blue, Chip. Beef's mouth was blue as well. Gotcha again, said Kevin with a smirk. Those are trick sweets from the joke shop. After Kevin left, Biff said, "Next time we need to trick him." At the weekend, Biff asked Dad to take them to the joke shop in town. The shop was full of tricks to play. This camera squirts water," said Chip. "How about an ice cube?" said Keeper. He has a plastic fly in it," he said. "No, we need something better to trick Kevin," said Biff. "Trick me," said a voice. It was Kevin. He had come to the joke shop too with his mom. "No chance," said Kevin. "Nobody ever gets me with a trick." I've got an idea," said Chip. Beef and Keeper leaned in and listened carefully. The next time Kevin came to the house, the children were ready for him. "Do you want a glass of water?" asked Beef. "Nice try," said Kevin. "I bet that is a trick glass that makes you dribble down your front." Sit down and play a game with us, Kevin," said Chip. "No way," said Kevin. "There's probably a trick cushion that makes a rude noise on that chair." Keeper had a bunch of flowers. "Look at these, Kevin," he said. "No chance," said Kevin. "Those must be trick flowers that squirt water." Kevin went. And stood in the corner. When it was time to go, Kevin said, "See, nobody tricks me." Bib smiled. "We did trick you. You did nothing all afternoon, just waiting for a trick," said Chip. "But we never had any tricks ready." "Gotcha, Kevin," said Bib and Chip together. And Kevin had to agree. In the dark, Biff had a game pad. They are great, she said. The games are brilliant. Look at this, she said. I made up a little person a bit like me. I zoom along on a jetpack. At this level, I zap snow giants and try to miss flying snowballs. May I have a go? Asked Keeper, but Biff did not want to let him. I'm just about to go up to the next level, she said. You can have a go tomorrow. The next day, Biff went to judo club with Chip. Keeper, go and tidy up your bedroom," said Mom. Keeper saw Biff's game pad on the bed in her room. Biff did say I could have a go, he said. So he sat on the bed and began to play. Keeper was not very good at the game. Splat! He kept getting hit by things. Suddenly, the magic key began to glow. Keeper went with a whoosh into an adventure. The magic key took Keeper into a game. He had a jetpack on. Whoosh! Help! said Keeper. How do I control this thing? Zoom! 
Keeper was heading for the corn cob monsters. Wow, he yelled. I got past them. Splat! A flying tomato hit him. Oh, yuck! He gasped. That was not good. But Keeper got better at controlling the jetpack. Soon he went up to the next level. He zoomed up and down, missing the robot dragons and popping paint balloons. Pop! Splat! Keeper went up to the next level. Suddenly, a warning began to splash. Recharge! The battery was low. Keeper started to slow down. A jelly landed on his head. Plop! It began to go dark. Oh no! said Keeper. If the gamepad runs out of power, I will be stuck. Just then, Biff came back from judo. My gamepad needs charging, she said. Keeper landed in Biff's room. Bump! He told Biff where he had been. Don't be cross with me, Biff, he said. I'm not cross, said Biff. It's funny. It was not funny at the time, said Keeper. Do you want to play another game, said Biff. No, not just yet, said Keeper. The Frog's Tail Biff was reading Keeper a story all about a talking frog. Frogs can't talk, said Keeper. In stories, talking frogs are always prince under a spell, Biff explained. Just then, the magic key began to glow. It was time for an adventure. The magic took them to a pond. A frog was gazing at them. Hello, it croaked. You must be a prince, Biff told it. Really? croaked the frog. Just like our story, gasped Keeper. There was a castle not far away. Come on, we will take you there, said Biff. At the castle gate, a soldier said, Hey, you can't bring that frog in here. He's really a prince, Biff said. And princes always live in castles. The soldier let them in. They came to the castle kitchen. Hey, no yucky frogs in here, shouted the cook. He's really a prince, said Keeper. In that case, do you like fancy food? The cook asked the frog. Yes. Princes always like fancy food, said Biff. I prefer bugs, croaked the frog. After lunch, they met the princesses. Get that horrible thing out of my sight, she shouted. He's a prince, not a horrible thing, said Biff. And princes always get on with princesses. In that case, let's play tennis, the princesses told the frog. I'd rather swim, the frog croaked. The king and queen were outside. Princesses, why are you talking to a frog, asked the king. When Biff explained, the queen said, the royal wizard must change this poor prince back. The royal wizard just listened. Then he said, That isn't a prince. That's a real frog. The king was furious. Get that frog, he cried. The frog did its best to avoid capture. But at last, one soldier got it. Now take him to the tower, ordered the queen. That's not fair, cried Biff. This frog is more special than any prince. How often do you meet a talking frog? 
Very well, said the king. Set him free. The frog jumped toward the window. It looked back at the room and croaked, "Goodbye." Then it hopped off the ledge. Talking frogs always hop off like that," said Biff. "We need to hop off too," said Keeper. <laughs>